Hello and welcome, my name is Nilos and this is another little uh, video showing something cool that I've uh, been working on. This time it's a glider to build solar panels for me and solar areas, solar farms basically. So we've all uh, created these massive solar farms with uh, solar panels and accumulators and even with robot it takes a while. So as I saw uh, Nifty Maniacs uh, uh, the glider I thought this is a perfect opportunity to build a self-expanding solar field so that's what I decided to do and this is the little thing that actually does it it's taken a hell of a long time to build and for something this simple in any case let me just uh, briefly explain this is a video demonstrating what it can do I will provide uh, I'll provide the blueprint a same game all of that so you can play around with it yourself this is not a detailed tutorial on how to use recursive blueprints, the main mod in this. I will probably do that some other time though, but uh, just basically, basic walkthrough. So I will just briefly explain and then I'll let it rip and then we can explain as it, uh, it progresses. But in order to understand what's going on, just you need the basics. So the basics is this part. The key mod in this setup is recursive blueprints. Recursive blueprints uses these kind of uh, special chest blueprint deployer. So when a blueprint is placed in here, it will deploy the blueprint. If a blueprint book is deployed, then it get hopefully it should get a signal, signal robot, the construction of one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that will correspond to in my blueprint book, the various positions of the, um, of the blueprints. So as I put in my six my blueprint book with six blueprints it will progress through this series actually here and go out here then uh, to deploy them and that's what we're going to do basically the very first thing it does is deploy the infrastructure then it will deploy uh, several of the solar farms and then it will wait until all the robots are done and then it will uh, start off restart the pattern and clean up after itself so i think that without further ado let's get it started what we need to do is actually just start it by putting the blueprint book into here and then we'll see what's going on. I need to zoom out. So the first thing it does is actually move it here. Then I have, let's have a look at the infrastructure that it builds. It is pretty big. This I just want to show you how big it is. This is uh, my normal setup and you can see the robots are flying in. I have 2000 robots on, on hand. And they will expand. They will expand this road, net, this network here. So this is a setup that corresponds to four by four normal robot ports. I'm playing a vanilla game, so that's the way it's going to set up. See here. Now the next ones are coming in. Ah, they didn't quite make the target. And they will then progress out. Let's head back and see because this one is triggered by two conditions. So it will not move on to the next stage until two conditions are met, both two green signals. The first green signal is the fact that time has passed, 1,200 ticks. Where this one is placed here, that just continues to accrue. And once that, that corresponds to 20 seconds, so when 20 seconds has passed, this will light up green, and there we go, that's the other one. That happens when the number of, look at this beautiful thing. Oh, I love this. I just love that. <laughs> look how fast it goes. And that's the next blueprints. You can see the blueprint is progressed all the way over here and into this waiting position. So this is going to take a while. Um, let's just spend the take the opportunity to explain what is going on. Right. So these two went green because the because of this condition here, this condition that the set and the T, the available and the total construction robots are identical. That triggers one green signal. Twenty seconds has passed. That triggers another green signal and then it moves on. Each of these next ones, they will move on simply on the condition that there's a blueprint book. This just ensures that it actually has a chance to trigger and then move on. Here it'll just deploy this section and then this section and then that section and then this section. You can see here the sequence, how well they are filled out. And down here we can see that the robots they're about 600 so they still have a lot of robots that are working now let's progress here at this point it will not skip over to the sixth one the last blueprint the last blueprint is actually the one that takes this pattern and repeats it let's go on the map up here 
and then restarting the whole thing all over. It won't do that, but it'll park it down here. And this one and then is triggered again by the set equal to T, meaning that the available RoboPorts are identical to the total RoboPorts. Uh, not RoboPorts, just robots. And once that happened, it triggers. We're going to be have to be ready when this happens because we're going to shoot up there to take a look. Let's just have a look at uh, the network. You can see here there are big blossoms around, big flowers around each RoboPort. I don't really care about that. I don't mind that very much. We're going to rock, run all the way around here. See here, the robots, they're just busy little bees working on placing all of the things here. And you can see I, I'm placing radars in the corners just to make sure that I can actually see what's going on as it progresses. We've now spent five minutes of this um, of this glider, and the glider has already placed down the majority of these 2,500 needed for this square. Let's have a look. It's almost done. And we should see the robot being starting to be idle now. Yes, they're idle, and they're approaching the 2,000 mark. Now, what will happen is that the last blueprint, the one that replicates, com copies this pattern so that it can start moving forward. It will also deploy some additional uh, machines over here. Not here, but further up in the replicate, replicate of this. And, okay, we're about 80 left. And those will actually clean up down here. Let's look at that when it happens. So we're going to monitor this as it progresses, 25 left. So it's not that bad takes five minutes when the uh, available let's take a look at it let's see and then switches to green second there we go and it places here now the robots coming in and they will be rushing up north to place it and I'll uh, rush up with them you can see that's our 2500 solar panels and corresponding accumulators this is now the location this corresponds to what we've done before and oh, what perfect timing they're just coming in. Oh, unfortunately, they it lost all of its electricity. But it will get it once that one is established. There we go. So you can see here, what happens is that as this one, now it's part of the network. Once this goes to 2,000, these two trigger. At these two, you can see the output signals here. They are now triggered. They are not input signals here. They are not triggered yet. But once they do, there we go. That triggers. And you can see here. Now everything up here is starting the next square. But that's not all. If we take a look at this one, this has two purposes. It has the purpose of restarting. The key point here is, and there's two things to explain. These parts, this one, says this is a constant constant combinator this is a decider combinator so basically when i create a green signal i get that from here when set equal to t i get a green signal and then i pipe out the input basically input which is this input which means deconstruct x move three this way move 228 down and then take a, a location that is height seven and width 11. that corresponds to this area will be deconstructed uh, way down in the previous section. The same one like this one, this deconstructs this area, and that means it's clean, no more deployers. And what happens is that this, uh, this blueprint book is located in the last one that will be deconstructed and then moves down to the storage chest. What happens then is that you can see here, in the network, I have one single logistics robot. The logistics robot is then in charge of identifying that there's a blueprint book, and this one has requesting one blueprint book, and that will then be carried up, and that's the trigger for starting the next section. There's one teeny tiny little glitch in this one, and that's, yeah, it, it's something I'm gonna, got. there's a wooden box here. That wooden box is used as an indicator of the location. The easiest part would actually just be putting a few wooden boxes in here, now that I remember it. But you can see here, this section has now been cleaned out. All of the deployed chests are gone, and the reason why I'm doing this specifically is because I have 
the intention of using this so that I will be able to once this is placed I'll be able to expand my glider with making the pavement with making uh, the train tracks running around and then this is a perfect spot now let's have a look at our situation and I am sure that what we can see a look at that that's a lot of robots heading down and guess why that's because we have now placed our infrastructure and once the infrastructure is placed it starts placing the next solar panels or the next solar farm it's not going to be as fast as the previous one because of course uh, there's a longer lead time but again this is not designed to be particularly fast this is uh, is designed to be effective just fire and forget i don't need to monitor it you have not pressed the button since we started it and this is just uh, expanding my solar panels for me i can expand it so i have several of these running in parallel they're not particularly expensive to start up oops that was turning the wrong way and you'll be able to see here not a lot of the solar panels are actually being placed but the the robots are busy okay here we go they're, now they're that's a bad place for me to drive and you can see down here the robots 2000 idle robots oh no not idle but 2000 busy robots most of them are probably charging here and there but that's still pretty good and this will just continue this will probably take 10 minutes while in the meantime the blueprint book has progressed through the series and is now in a waiting position and once that happens it will deconstruct or it will construct this little area further up and deconstruct this one here and then start the whole thing all over and it just keeps going as long as you keep feeding it the part is also that it will recycle all of these so i don't need to sort of continually add more of the deployer chests or any of this It'll, these will be recycled and placed in the next one so all on it's a uh, it's quite effective, not particularly efficient, but extremely effective because now I can just have a glider creating solar panels for me. And I hope this will inspire someone else to make a similar solar panel creation. Of course, there are lots of potential for expansion, as I said, the pavement, the train tracks, but also um, deconstructing in advance, even to the extent of have pushing a, a continuous flowing wall of, uh, of laser turrets forward. In advance of this so that you clear out aliens unfortunately as i to the best of my knowledge it's not possible to um, to landfill with blueprints although that would be pretty damn cool if you could do that then then i'd just go crazy with this in any case this is mainly used as a as an appetizer as an inspiration so i hope you enjoyed it and that you'll build your own gliders and share it so um, I'll be installing this in my season seven campaign. So feel free to drop by and take a look at that. And probably also in every and all future campaigns of mine. Anyway, thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, leave a like, share, and I'll see you around. Thank you. Bye.